I managed to source all the engine bolts. And believe it or not, I found these in a little motorbike shop down the road. I had to cut some of them down a little bit. And they're not the original Phillips bolts. But these are doing. I think they look quite nice. So now we've got these, we can get cracking getting the engine reassembled. Let's get the engine cleaned up, shall we? Gonna bother taking this apart, no need to. Well, I've got a new one of these, so that can go in the bin. I'll get a new box. Let's get these out in the sun to dry. Make sure we don't lose anything. It's a good thing about living in a hot country. Even in winter it's about 30 degrees today. So these can bake and dry off nicely. Once all these are dry, I'm gonna get some engine oil, start reassembling it all. Well, before we get the crank in and the gearbox, which has come out really nice, I wanna prepare these faces. Get them cleaned off a bit, ready for the liquid gasket. Using a 280, I don't think it's too abrasive. So I'll get cracking with this and get back to you. There you go, it's got it. I'm probably gonna give it a, a dry fit first. Just make sure I've got everything in the right way. 
and in the right place. I'm sure if I don't, I'll soon find out. <laughs> but anyway, let's go and wash these hands off. Well, there's the gear cluster, how it's going to go. So I'm going to get that all lined up with the dogs. I'm going to hold it and then drop it in the casing. slipped right in nicely I think that's got it is everything cleaned up and ready I've got the crank in let's get this liquid gasket on and we'll get the cases together Right, I think that's all of them. Well, there you go. Got it done in the end. I made a bit of a mess of it, but I'm going to clean it up and repaint the casing once we're done. Let's go from fifth gear. Fourth gear, third gear, second gear, neutral, first gear. Voila! Must have been the old crank felt a little bit tight, but maybe that's just because the bearings need some oil. Yeah, good stuff. So I think next we can try and get the clutch on there, get all the bits and pieces put back together. Flywheel, out of casings in the barrel. And I'm that confident I'm not going to start it until it's in the bike. Well, let's get stuck into getting this clutch on and the gear selector. I had a bit of trouble with this nut here. I think it might have been when I was putting the crank in. I bashed it and I think I damaged the thread a little bit, but lucky enough I've got a thread file. I'll give it a few goes on that. 
well I'll clean the knife a little bit someone had used a chisel to undo it at some point but not too bad so I'm gonna keep that one okay let's get cracking Keeping the little X up. Just give this a clean up really first, shouldn't I? There you go, that looks better. Nice and clean. I'm going to get the clutch in so I can get all the other components in but I'm not going to put the clutch plates in because I've got some new ones on order. There's a bit of meat on them but if I'm going to do it to factory standard then I might as well put new ones in. Okay let's get cracking. Should put a bit of oil on there before I put it on shouldn't I? Never mind. There we go. Okay, let's put the gear selector rod through. Let's get it on here first of all. One's a little bit bigger than the other and I've forgotten which one goes where. <laughs> okay, let's go and have a look on the video and I'll get back to you. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes because you don't need a strong spring on this one but you do on this one I also think I need a new o-ring. This looks like it's a little bit stretched. Yeah. Barely going to fit in there, is it? It's going to flap about. Okay, we'll get a new one of those as well. We're going to have to give this case in another touch up by the time we've finished. 
Great stuff. Let's get a bit of work done on the fly wheel generator this side, shall we? Tighten that down a bit later. So we've got a new gasket for this from the ambits. Just gonna clean up this face a little bit, it's got a bit of paint on it. Near the uh, liquid gasket on there, it should be just fine. Well, I put a new sprocket, 14 teeth, a standard new rear sprocket, I think this is 36 teeth, and a new chain, but I'm not going to be fitting them quite yet. So let's get this magneto on, shall we? There we go. Well, I can't get the magneto on because I'm missing the woodruff key that goes in the keyway there holds it in place. Uh, I've had a look through this box of bits and it's not in there. So I don't know where it is. To be honest I haven't seen it for a long while so I'm going to make a new one have a piece of hardened steel that I've got from an old cutting blade and then we'll get that in place and then we can start thinking about getting the barrel on. Oh your little teaser. Well, this is a little woodruff key I made. I used a HSS bit, hardened steel. It's got an old one. But yeah, I've tried it, I've fitted it, and it does the trick. So let's get this flywheel put on, shall we? Okay, looks good. Okay, I did get a new order today. And it was a new O-ring for the clutch. And this one, I don't know what this came off because this was almost half the size of this. And this is a genuine Yamaha one. 
I still haven't been able to get the clutch plates. The guy I ordered them off, he got back to me and he said he hasn't got them in stock, only one. So I've cancelled the order and I put in an order with another seller. So hopefully that should arrive in a day or two. I also bought a new coil, ignition coil. The old one here has seen better days. It's almost gone through there, they've repaired it twice. And this cable isn't detachable. So there's the new one, six volt. Problem is the bracket that holds it is out by about a centimetre or so. So what I've decided to do, I'm gonna cut this here Or maybe over a little bit and then I'm going to weld this little lug in place here and that should be uh, good enough anyway let's have a quick look at this frame shall we well, there you go I gave it a good clean up and it's in quite a bad condition very very pitted but it should be okay there's no major issues I cleaned it up at the back here and I gave it a prime just to see how it would look. There is one problem I did see here and it's with the pin for the centre stand. You can see someone's already welded a bracket on where it wore. But even that's worn so it's flapping about in there. And on the other side, someone's welded a plate on the back. So I'm going to try and take that off as well. Yeah, they've only tack welded it by the looks of it. It's like a washer. And I'm going to fabricate a plate to go on this side and this side. Oh, whoa. It's going to need another degrease. But you saw what came off of it in the last video. Ten times better. Okay, I think we're going to have to get the frame and the engine done in the next one. I'll make it a part five, number two. <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting on the clutch. And there's a lot of work and I've got to do some welding to be done. But anyway, before we sign off, I want to go over some stuff that came in. I don't know if you saw the old side panels. But they've got a plastic lug missing on that one. They're pretty scratched up and damaged. This one's been re-welded. And I saw these online, so I thought I'd have them. Okay, they're not brand new. They're second hand, but they're in quite good condition. There's no breakage or damage, just a couple of scratches, and they've got to be more painted anyway. So yeah, good stuff. Okay, got plastic Yamaha stickers for the side of the tank. I thought I'd renew those. The other ones were okay, but they looked old and shabby. New engine drain plug. And believe it or not, the frame and the engine is actually off an RXS 115. Um, I've been doing a bit of research. They didn't have a round headlight and they didn't have a drum brake on the front. They had a disc. So oh, that's something I'm going to look for at a later date. But also, they have a square headlight. So I've decided to go and try and stay as original as I can. So there's a square headlight. And to go with the square headlight, I saw this on my headlight cowling. And again, this is under 20 quid. Yeah. And I thought, well, as I'll go for the headlight cowling, I want to go for the windscreen. Wing! <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, I've got two new reed valves. The inlet valve and the carburetor. 
the old ones there, they're banana shape, they're bent and they're not sitting flat on here. There's a little bit of a gap that's going to let excess air and it's going to unbalance the carburetor and the engine. Okay, under the tank rubbers, some lugs to the side of the tank. This goes on top of the frame for the wiring. And there's a lug that the back of the tank goes on. What else we got? Okay, got the head bearings for the yokes. I think I might have showed you these. These are the uh, covers for the forks and the oil seals for the forks. Just keeps on coming. <laughs> These are front foot rests, I've still got to get the rear ones. There's a rear tail light, brand new. I think it's plastic rather than chrome, but hey, it was quite cheap. And with that came four of the RXS 115 square indicators, because that's what they seem to have. And last but not least, these have arrived today. Oh wow, new forks. And again, I think these were 950 baht, which is dollars, pounds. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, if you did like the video, do give me a thumbs up, do subscribe if you can, do leave me a comment, always welcome, and it helps my channel out. So see you in part six.